In a previous video, we talked about using these three distributions whenever we're talking about a hypothesis test or a confidence interval. We're going to, there are three kinds of hypothesis tests about the mean of a population, a two-tailed test, a lower-tailed test, and an upper-tailed test. In this video, let's look at a lower-tailed test. So here we're, the uh, null hypothesis is going to say that the mean is equal to some particular value. We'll call it mu, uh, mu zero, mu naught. And the alternative hypothesis, it's a one-tailed, lower-tailed test, is claiming that the, the no, it's not equal to, to mu zero, but it's actually less than, than that particular amount. Okay, so let's see what that's saying. So here we've got a, a null hypothesis that is claiming that mu is actually equal to some mu zero. And an alternative hypothesis to say, no, that's not true. What's really true is that mu is less than that particular amount. So the null hypothesis is saying that the mu is going to be this number, mu zero. So that means in the <clears throat> distribution of sample means that the distribution of the sample means will be mu zero. Okay. So what we're going to do is try and test this hypothesis and see what we think. We're going to take a sample from this population and find out what the, the mean of that sample is. So we take a sample and find its mean and we find out that it's x bar. Now it's probably to the left of this. That's, that's part of the reason that we were thinking that the alternative hypothesis was no, the real mean is, is less because we've seen some evidence that's suggesting that it's, that it's less. So is this x bar far enough to the left that it would be very unlikely that that would occur if the mean of this population was really mu zero? Or is it still close enough here that, that we can't really throw that, that option out? So we're going to, to decide that in one of two ways. One way, in, in, in each way, we take this particular x bar and convert it to a t-value in the following way. We say x bar minus, suppose that it really was true that the mean was mu zero, divided by the standard deviation or the standard error of this uh, distribution of sample means. So we're going to take that s divided by the square root of n. Okay, so that calculation is counting how many standard errors we are away from the mean. So that's going to give us some particular value here. Okay, that's some kind of a t value that we're getting out of that. So there's this t here. So now there's going to be two ways that we discuss this situation. One would be to find a p value, the probability value. The p value associated with this is this area down here. That's counting the probability that we would have got that particular t value or something less than that by picking a sample out of here. If the p value is low, the null hypothesis must go. You see why? You see if that t value is very, very small, then, the, then it's very, very unlikely that this kind of thing could, could happen, that we could have picked a sample from here and got that particular mean. It could happen, but it's unlikely. So if the p value is low, the null hypothesis must go. In, in more classical uh, settings, then what people would say is, we want a significance level. OK, 
okay? And so they would say maybe the significance level is 5%. So they would just look and say, where is this T value so that, so that 5% is less than it? If the T that we get ends up further away than that 5% or whatever the significance level is, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If it's closer to the mean than that, then we're going to keep that null hypothesis. So there's two ways of handling that. One is to worry about the p-value. If the p-value is low, the null hypothesis must go. Or there's the more classical way where somebody actually specifies a significance level. If the t-value ends up down below that that uh, that that T that would produce that significance level, then we reject the null hypothesis. Okay.